Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum students. My name is Osama Rufar and my ID is 34 and my department is BS Biotechnology. Today the topic of my presentation is UV visible spectroscopy. So first of all, what is spectroscopy? Spectroscopy is the branch of science that deals with the study of interaction of matter with light. It is also the study of interaction of electromagnetic radiation with matter. So what is electromagnetic radiation? It consists of discrete packages of energy which are called as photons. A photon consists of an oscillating electric field and an oscillating magnetic field which are perpendicular to each other. As we can see in the diagram, there is a white light which pass on dispersion angle and there is other lights red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indo, violet in the prism when the light comes in one form in the prism it shows in seven form this is also the diagram of electromagnetic radiation wavelength electric field direction and magnetic field uh, frequency it is defined as the number of times of electric field radiation oscillating in one second one frequency is equal to one cycle per second wavelength it is the distance between two nearest parts of wave in the same phase for example difference between nearest gas or trough the relation between wavelength and frequency can be written as c is equal to v lambda as photon is subjected to energy e is equal to h v is equal to h c over lambda so next let's talk about principles of UV visible spectroscopy. The UV radiation region extends from 10 nanometer to 400 nanometer and the visible radiation region extends from 400 nanometer to 800 nanometer. Near UV region is 200 to 400 nanometer and far UV region is below 200 nanometer. For UV spectroscopy is studied under vacuum condition. The common solvent used for preparing sample to be analyzed is either alcohol or hexane. Continued UV spectrometer principle follows the Beard's Lambert's law. This law states that whenever a beam of monochromatic light is passed through a solution with an absorbing substance, the decreasing rate of the radiation intensity along with the thickness of the absorbing solution is actually proportional to the concentration of solution and incent incident radiation. This law is expressed in this equation a is equal to log 10 over i is equal to ECI a stands for the a stands for the absorbance 10 refers to the intensity of light upon a sample cell i refers to the intensity of light and c stands for concentration of solute l stands for the length of sample cell and e refers to the molar absorptivity so coming towards the next electronic transition of uv visible spectroscopy in this diagram you can see there is an energy antibonding antibonding pi electron and sigma electron non antibonding bonding and bonding due to upper and lower energy this is from electronic transition types of electronic transition there are four four transitions sigma transition this transition needs high energy it's very strong and occurs in saturated hydrocarbons such as methane the transition requires very short radiation of wavelength high energy second n minus sigma transition this type of transition occurs in saturated compounds which contain one heteratom has unshared period of uh, alcohols ethers three pi minus pi not transition this type of transition occurs in saturated compounds this type occurs at longer of wavelength then transition alkenes alkynes and carbonyl compounds with this transition fourth one is n minus pi transition this type of transition occurs in unsaturated compounds which contain heteroatom has unshared paired electron unshared electron on a heteroatom excited level energy of n minus pi transition less than energy of an other transition and occurrence at longer wavelength so these are all the four types of tra electronic transition which work which perform a best work in 
visible spectroscopy coming to our next application of spectroscopy first detection of impurities uv spectroscopy is the one of important method to detect organic solvent additional peaks can be deserved due to impurities in the sample and it can be compared with standard raw material by also measuring the absorbance at specific wavelength impurities can be neglected this is the spectrometer of paracetamol see in the diagram standard paracetamol on the upper and para standard uh, paracetamol with impurity almost 400 nanometer structure elucidation of organic compounds uv spectroscopy is useful in the structure elucidation of organic molecule the presence or absence of unsaturation the presence of heteroatoms from the location of peaks and combination of peaks it can be concluded that whether the compound is saturated or unsaturated heteroatoms are present or not in the structure of organic compounds third one is quantitative analysis it can be used for the quantitative determination of compound that absorbs uv radiation a is equal to log 10 over it i over t is equal to log a b c is equal to e b c where e is the extinction constant c is the concentration of cell b is the length of cell in uv spectrometer beard's law is the example of quantitative analysis Qualitative analysis. UV absorption spectroscopy can characterize those type of computers which absorbs UV radiation. Identification. Identification can be done by comparing absorbing spectrum with the spectra of known compounds. Number fifth, chemical kinetics. Kinetics of reaction can be studied using UV spectroscopy. It is the radiation passed through the cell and absorbance can be charged by observed. Quantitative analysis of pharmaceutical substance. Many drugs are in the form of either formulation, solution of drug can in solvent and measuring absorbance at specific wavelength. Dipazim tablet can be analyzed 0.5% H2SO4 in methanol and wavelength 284 nanometer. Examination of polynuclear hydrocarbons. Benzene and polynuclear hydrocarbons have characteristic spectra in ultraviolet and visible region. Thus, identification of polynuclear hydrocarbons can be made by comparison with the spectra of known polynuclear compounds. Polynuclear hydrocarbons are the hydrocarbon molecule with two or more close rings, for example, naphthalene and diphenyl, with two bond concentrated benzene ring, also known as polycyclic hydrocarbons. Molecular weight determination. This is the last application of the spectroscopy. Molecular weight of compounds can be measured spectrometrically by preparing the suitable derivatives of this compound. For example, if we want to determine the molecular weight of amine, then it is converted in amine picrate. Then known concentration of amine picrate is dissolved in liter, liter of solution and it dissolves 380 nanometer lambda maximum. Cor so talk about instrumentation. Instrument for measuring the absorption of UV visible spectroscopy or radiation are following components. Sources, wavelength selector, amplifier, recorder, sample and references card. Source of UV visible. It is important that the power of radiation sources does not change abruptly. It's over wavelength range. The electrical excitation of deuterium or hydrogen at low pressure produces a continuous UV spectrum. The mechanism for this involves excited molecular species. This can be shown in ultraviolet photon, for example, D2 plus electrical energy in the, as you can see in the diagram. Both deuterium the hydrogen lamps, both deuterium and hydrogen lamps emit radiation in 160 to 3 nanometer, quartz windows in 350 nanometer. A tungsten filament lamp is commonly employed as a source of visible light. This type of lamp is used in 350 to 2500 This means that for the energy, this means that for energy output to be stable, the voltage of lamp must be very stable in the end. Electronic voltage regulators on constant voltage transfer are used in stability. 
Also use tungsten halogen lamps contain a small amount of iodine in quartz envelope which also contains a tungsten filament. The iodine reacts with gaseous tungsten formed by sublimation producing the volatile compound. So detector. The next second instrumentation. The photomultiplier tube is commonly used as a UV visible spectroscopy. It consists of an emissive cathode, a cathode which emits electron when struck by photons of radiation, several dynodes. A photon of radiation entering the tube strikes a cathode, causing the emission of several electrons into 90 volt with specific more than cathode. Photomultiplier tubes are very sensitive to UV and visible radiation. By this time, the original photon has 10 is power to 6 to 7 electrons. The resulting current is amplified is measured. Intense light damage multipliers are limited to the power multiplier radiation. This is the structure of photomultiplier tube. In the center is grill, incident radiation, photomassive cathode, and the uh, outer is black color dynode and uh, in center small form and odd wavelength selector all monochromators contain the following component parts a collimating lens dispersing device focusing lens and excite slit polychromatic radiations enters the monochromatic through the entrance slit the beam is collimated and thus strikes the dispersing element at an angle the beam is split into the component wavelengths by the grating or prism by moving the dispersing element or the exit slate, radiation is only particular wavelength leaves the monochromatic through the exit slate. Sample and reference call. One of the two divided beam is passed through the sample solution and second beam is passed through the reference solution. Both are contained in cells. These cells are made of silica or quartz. Glass cannot be used for cell. It also absorbs light in UV region. Amplifier. The amplifier current generated in the photocells is transferred to the amplifier. The amplifier is coupled to a small servometer. Generally, current generated in photocell is very, is very simplified to the signals many times, so we can get clear and recordable signal. Recordable devices. Most of the time amplifier is coupled to a pen recorder which is connected to the computer. Computer stores all the data generated and proceeds spectrum of the desired computers. Thank you. This is all from my side. I hope you all understand about the UV visible spectroscopy. Thank you so much for your attention.